It's the weekend. I've got not much to do, a bit bored to be honest. So I thought I'd set myself a fun little challenge. And it involves this thing. I want to leave my workshop at home and ride my Sinclair C5 all the way to the top of the Malvern Hills. But that's only half the journey. We don't want to be stuck there. It's got to get us all the way home too. The Sinclair C5 was produced 40 years ago now, back in 1985. And at that time they claimed it had a top speed of 15 mile an hour and a range of 20 miles. So I bought my C5 six years ago. I did a couple of trips in it, but there's no way I can do a 20 mile range in this. My brother, he does triathlons and Ironman men competitions or whatever they're called. With a bit of pedaling, he'd probably get 20 miles out of it. And my dad, he's in his 70s, does half marathons, and he's always running about. He'd probably get 20 miles out of it. But me, I'm all motor, me. I, I ain't gonna pedal this thing. I'm like the black sheep of the family. Cannot stand exercise. But our trip, it's more than nine kilometers long. That's five and a half miles. And looking at this graph, it's uphill the entire way. And I just don't think this motor has got enough like oomph in it to get us up that hill. And the range, 20 miles, yeah, it's nine kilometers there, nine back. I don't reckon we'd do more than four miles on this. We need to test it. I got a fairly big garden, so let's get a battery in it. Let's pump up the tires and get it outside and give it a whiz. Right, we're outside. Clouds have covered us now, but there's the beast. Um, so my garden is quite long, as I said. Ooh. I'm gonna keep it to the compact gravel bit where I've driven up and down, so then that gives us least rolling resistance. You'll have to excuse the hedge behind me. If you remember the last video where I built the buggy, uh, I said the storm blew my gates inside out. It also blew all the trees down that hide my workshop, which sucked. I got a phone app in my pocket that's gonna record our top speed now. Are we gonna get 15 mile an hour? It's doubtful, isn't it? Right, let's get in. Let's turn our power on. Let's go. I didn't crash it, honest, there it is, still in one piece. So let's get the phone out and have a look. 10 million, no, just 10, 10 miles an hour. So I don't know how accurate this GPS speedo is. What's that, one third down on top speed. The battery is fully charged, but this C5 has been sat on top of my body shop for the last six years. So. You never know, it just might need running in, it might be a bit tight. But the next test is the range. And I think if I'm gonna drive around this garden for the next 20 miles, I'm gonna put my hat on and my coat on as well. To make this a fairer test, I'm gonna cut the grass on our racetrack and then hopefully our C5 will just glide across it nicer. So I started off with the C5 going anti-clockwise, but the button you press to get the motor going is on the left-hand side and it was getting stuck under my leg. So did a quick UE, started going around clockwise. After a while, we got up to just above two kilometers and I started smelling something real bad, plasticky, burny smell, along with under my bum was starting to get red hot. I kept going, pushed through it and eventually just under three kilometers, we crawled to a halt. Well, I think if my neighbors thought I was nuts already, if they've just watched me go around the garden for 30 minutes in this thing, they definitely think I'm nuts now. Uh, the hot bit was like here, it was left cheek high up and it got 
very warm and I can still smell like burning plastic now. The only problem is I've noticed, I'll just turn the power on. If I press this button now, it just clicks. There's no throttle on these. It's just on or off. You know, you can't regulate the speed, but there's nothing. Well, I've, got, I've got a screwdriver in here. Let's just give it a knock. No. I think the motor's definitely knackered now. What people don't realise on these things, they're only one wheel drive. This wheel powers the motor and then, oh, listen to that. This wheel is the brake. I'll tell you what, if 1985 was summed up by a noise, it's this. <sighs> I think we need some wheel bearings on that. Right, well, I definitely can't go up the hills on this motor anyway, because it's knackered. So let's strip it down and see what we got to work with. Let's go. And there we go, have a look at that. I mean, there's not much rust on it, to be honest. As soon as it's 40 years old, it's done well. Uh, there's the motor, if I spin the back, yeah, it does still turn, but that's where our heat was in that area when my bum got warm, so yeah, I've just got to have burnt it out, and I? Looking at how it drives the wheel, we got this like plastic cog and about and the motor's held in by a big plastic bracket so we put anything more powerful in there i think it's just going to rip it all to bits um it is freewheeling near that noise so yeah i think we'll strip it down a bit more but let's have a think about how we can make this work better before we swap out this motor we've got to check the rules for the uk so looking at it, the motor, it can't be more than 250 watts and we can't go faster than 15 and a half miles an hour. So we've got some thinking to do because otherwise it's classed as a motorcycle or a moped and we have to have insurance and a registration. So with all them rules and regulations in mind, I've bought this 3000 watt 72 volt motor. I know what you're thinking, that's definitely way more than 250 watt. So I've got this controller, which is programmable, so we can turn the power down. It came with a sprocket and chain and the throttle, which is ideal because on the throttle, you've got these three settings. So we'll set our number one to the 15 mile an hour and 250 watt. And then number two will be the middle and number three will be full power that we can only use off road. Let's get our little cog. So I noticed on this wheel, the middle of it has got this like star thing on it, but the other side just got the bearings. So that's our bearings that are squeaking like crazy. Oh yeah, there is a spline in the middle of that. Try and get it off without shaking the thing. Um, yeah, there's our little belt. Let's try and slip that off. And there we go. Oh, washer's falling over. Yeah, looking at that, that has got some kind of one-way clutch inside it because I can turn the middle tube that way, but then the other way, it turns the whole thing. We're going to need that because when we're coming back down from the hills, I don't want to be always on the motor. I want to just let off and let it like coast, you know, I don't want to put pressure on it. That looks like it's going to fit that cog on that bearing. We just got to, not smash, I was going to say smash. We got to gently persuade this plastic cog off this metal bearing. Let's have a go.
And now that was gently removed, I put the cog in the lathe and machined out the middle so that one-way clutch would fit mega nice. And then I welded it, hopefully flat, in this socket. It doesn't look pretty, but hopefully it will do the job. Let's see if it will spin. Yeah, that will do. That is bodge-tastic. <laughs> I took the middle out because in there looked like little plastic needle rollers. And I think welding that sprocket onto that would have totally melted everything inside. So just got to press that in the right way. So our motor is going to spin the right way and then fit it on and give it a little spin to see how square it is. Right, let's get on with the hardest job, the motor. So hopefully it's just this little nut that's pinching this motor together once that's undone. Give it a nice little wiggle. Slides right out in one piece, awesome. Then this plastic bracket, it's just too weak. We're not gonna use it. Let's cut the top off. And then we can test fit our motor. Luckily, the hole where the old motor was, it looks pretty much the same size. So that will do to hold it in place. Let's slide it in. Oof. Look at that. That's proper in line. Hey, that's gonna be mint there. I think all we'll do, because we need to adjust it like up or down to tighten that chain. So I think a bracket across the top, down the front to there, and we'll have like a threaded bar on either side. And then just wind it up. That's a bit of luck. Looks like it's gonna be an easy fit. Right, let's make a bracket. So after a lot of cutting box section and angle iron up, grinding flat sheet and drilling holes in it. I've made this contraption. It's proper sturdy. There's absolutely no movement in that at all. I mean, it looks a bit unsightly, but it's got 12 times more power than the last motor, so it's gotta be. I managed to cut down the chain, so it does turn, but there is a little bit of slack, but I can space up this motor. But, I mean, apart from the looks, I think that is ideal. I had to put a brace bar around the back because I need to come off the chassis here through and down to hold our battery, which I'll show you. So to run that motor, because it's so powerful, I needed this, which is a 40 amp hour, 72 volt battery. But I think we'll have to put it that way around. It is mega heavy, so it needs to go dead above the wheels to hold the weight, but that's where it's gonna fit. Whew, that is heavy. Right, I'll carry on with me battery cage. Hopefully we'll get it running today. Fingers crossed. Nice. That is heavy. Well, I made me battery box. It does fit behind the seat, which is good. And we've got that little cubby hole at the back where we can open up and disconnect the battery and stuff each time we're not using it. But yeah, awesome job. I've not welded underneath yet. I've got to take it all apart and clean it up and paint it all, make it look nice because it's a bit rusty at the moment. But I think now's the time we need to just test and yeah, make sure this is not too high up and we're just going to pop wheelies because I did originally want to mount it under here. But then when you think, you know, a big lithium battery hitting a rock or something, it's just, yeah, be a disaster, wouldn't it? So let's bang the wheels back on. Let's temporary fit the body on. And yeah, just double check that battery fits in there all right. I've got a new rear, I suppose you'd call it a boot lid. The last one, I cut a hole in it when I put a petrol engine in this a couple of years ago just to see what it was like, and spoiler, it was rubbish. Then I think where the old battery used to be, we'll slot this motor controller in there nice, and then we just gotta push it off the ramp and give it a test drive. I think the sun's about to come out, which is good. 
Got the mean machine outside, ready for a bit of action. I wonder how fast we'll get. I should open the gates at the bottom, really, just in case we end up crashing through them. I spent a bit of money on this battery and motor, so uh, hopefully it makes a difference. Let's go. Ugh. Turn the power on. Three, two, one. That's a lot faster. <gasps> Got no traction. So what has that little road test told us? <laughs> One, it's a lot faster. I checked my app after, 18 miles an hour we got out of it. That's not bad, seeing as I was pretty much sideways the entire way up my garden. And two, a one wheel drive Sinclair C5 is definitely no good. It's not gonna be good for us going up the hills, especially on grass and gravel and stuff like that when, when we're going up a steep incline like this. I did get the impact gun and just absolutely crush that bearing to see if I could crush it onto the shaft to make it two wheel drive. And after, managed to do a good couple of donuts on the grass, which was quite fun. But you could hear it was like slipping and making a horrible squealing noise. So yeah, we've got to try and fix that somehow. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know if we can like fill the bearings full of solder or something like that, or it needs a keyway. I don't know, if you've got any ideas, let me know. And also I've got to clean up the color. So do I paint it a different color or shall I keep it white so we don't attract the uh, attention of the old fuzz? You know, we don't want to get pulled over in it. But yeah, leave your thoughts. That's it for this video. As always, subscribe and all that jazz. And there's no adverts throughout this video, so hopefully that deserves a like. Come back for more C5 fun. Catch you again.